Cast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us for the webinar today. We hope you're, you're comfortable, uh, cozy up on this uh, chilly fall day. Uh, we look forward to spending the next hour with you. So uh, these are our quick logistics here. If you have uh, audio trouble through your computer, there is a, a dial-in line uh, for Canadian, uh, Canadian access. Um, if we experience any technical difficulties on, on our end, we will work as quickly as possible to uh, restore them and get back to you as soon as possible. But uh, hopefully we will have a nice normal presentation today. So uh, a couple of other uh, notes for you. Uh, you as members in the viewing audience uh, are on mute, uh, but that doesn't mean we don't want to hear from you. Uh, if you have questions that you think of at any time during the presentation, please use the question box uh, in the panel to your right. There's a little uh, questions uh, pane there on the GoToWebinar interface. Uh, in the control panel. Um, and also in the control panel there, you will find the handout section. We have four handouts for you uh, in today's presentation. Our presenters will refer to them in a couple of places. Uh, and you can download them and refer to them at any time. They are uh, for you uh, to, to use and refer to you as you like. We will be uh, recording today's webinar and we will be sharing all the webinar slides and everything uh, that participants have, have shared with us today uh, in a post-webinar email with you. So if you are uh, if you know of colleagues or, or friends who would like to listen in or read the materials, uh, you'll be able to forward that to them. And finally, if you or folks in your office are social media savvy, please tweet with us. Uh, we have a hashtag for all of our webinars, which is Prosper Webinar. And you can speak directly to us at Prosper Canada. We at Prosper Canada are very happy to be bringing this presentation to you today. We were founded in 1986, and we are a national charity devoted to expanding economic opportunity for Canadians living in poverty. Uh, we see uh, building financial wellness through asset, asset building, saving, access to one-on-one -on -one financial support, coaching, and counseling, access to financial literacy education, uh, all those key components of this, of this work. And today's presentation on education savings is certainly uh, a key, uh, key piece of this strategy. Prospect Canada's programming in financial literacy and financial coaching is part of the work by the Prospect Canada Center for Financial Literacy, which is co-founded and supported by the Bank Group. So we have two great speakers uh, coming up for you today. Uh, today's presentation is all about uh, saving for higher education using REFPs, or Registered Education and Savings Plans. Uh, we're going to give you a little bit of, a, of an introduction on saving for higher education and what it's all about and what REFPs uh, have to do with all of this um, and what that looks like in Canada. And then our, our two speakers for you, Alison Schmidt from Credit Counseling Services in St. Marie and Rocio Vasquez of Delmas University of Greater Vancouver. They're going to tell us about their experience working directly uh, to help people sign up for RESPs uh, and access these, these opportunities uh, on the ground. Uh, this kind of work brings a lot of success stories. It also brings a lot of challenges. So we're looking forward to hearing from them today. And then we're going to have some time at the end for questions. So again, as you think of questions, please let us know. Uh, and we will get as many of them as we can. So we're very excited to be with you today. Allison Schmidt is a financial empowerment coach. Uh, she's been working uh, in this in this field of social services for several years. Uh, she has uh, a variety of experience working in, in poverty, law, food security, uh, indigenous issue, issues, uh, and community uh, health, and she has education in community economic and social development. Um, she's really passionate about uh, working with individuals and, and communities who, who face various social and economic issues. So we're, we're very happy to have Allison here today. And Rocio Vasquez is from Family Services of Greater Vancouver. Uh, she is a client services officer for the Financial Empowerment Program at Family Services Greater Vancouver. Uh, she has 12 years of experience working in the not-for-profit sector, as well as community development and advocacy work. And she has nine years of experience uh, supporting individuals and families as a support worker. Uh, we're really, really happy to welcome Allison and Rocio with us today. 
And uh, we'd also like to learn a little bit more about you, uh, the folks who are joining us uh, from the audience today. We see there are about 80 of you listening in today, and we'd love to know more about what you do. So if you'd like to find your mouse, we have a quick question for you to uh, tell us about. Um, can you tell us what kind of work you do? Are you uh, in a community agency or a not-for-profit? Are you part of a municipal government? Are you part of a provincial or federal government? Do you work for a financial institution? Uh, or perhaps some other uh, body of work that we haven't listed here? Uh, please feel free to type in in the comments. To let us know. Um, so I'll leave this open for about 30 more seconds. This will just help us know who we're, who we're with today. All right, we'll close this in three, two, one. So we can see most of you are working with uh, community agencies or not-for-profits, uh, about two thirds of you actually. Um, and then filling in the rest, we have a balance of different government work and some financial institutions on the line. So, so thank you so much for telling us uh, more about the work that you do. And then next we have uh, another question just wanting to know more about if any of you are already doing work in the area of RESPs. Um, are you doing this as a very frequent focus of your work? You're, you're looking at RESPs as, as often as you can. Um, is this something that you only do occasionally? Um, maybe, but, it's, but it's definitely a part of what you do. Uh, or perhaps you don't do this kind of work yet, but you would like to start. I'll leave this open for about 30 more seconds. All right, so we'll, we'll close this in three, two, one. So it looks like about half of you are doing this work already to some degree. So that's that's really great to see. Um, and so about a quarter of you are doing this as, as actually a key focus of your work. Um, so congratulations to, to those efforts. And then I can see almost half of you are, are keen to get into the work. So we really hope that today's presentation will have a lot uh, to help you with. Um, so thank you very much uh, for answering those quick polls. It's great to know more about what you're doing uh, so that our, our presenters can also have a sense of uh, who, they're, who they're speaking with today. So we wanted to do a quick uh, sort of refresher or primer on what RESPs and education savings is all about, because you're going to hear our presenters talking about a lot of different things here and a lot of different kinds of products or challenges, and we'd like to kind of set this up well for them. Um, in general, we know that education savings is a key part of helping people move out of poverty because having advanced education at college or university can really lead to higher skills development and also higher incomes through uh, better access to uh, jobs that are, that are well paying. So it really does contribute to quite a lot of stability later in life. And having education savings is a key part of getting to that higher education uh, at the post-secondary level, uh, and that's where RESPs come in. So we know from research that two-thirds of people who have RESPs uh, find that having that uh, did help them save starting earlier, so it, it, is, it is a proven uh, mechanism to helping, have, helping get education savings. Um, and more than that, uh, having education savings means people are actually more likely to use the savings and attend post-secondary education. Uh, and that this is also true for, for families uh, from, lower, from lower incomes. Uh, it fosters a lot of expectation and motivation and planning, uh, and there's quite a bit of research to, to support that. And you're gonna hear our presenters talking a little bit about RES, talking quite a lot about RESPs, but there's also different financial products or, or benefits that are associated with the RESP. Um, in Canada, we have access to a few different uh, 
benefits that, that can help, especially for families with lower incomes. Um, the, the Canada Education Savings Grant is one important example of this. It offers matched savings for families for low to modest incomes. So when you contribute to the, the, the Canada Education Savings, when you contribute to your ISP, the Canada Education Savings Grant matches that contribution up to a certain level. Um, and then the Canada Learning Bond is especially relevant for those living on lower incomes because if you are a family on a lower income, the, the CLB is essentially available as, as free education savings. Uh, it, it starts you out with $500 and then each year after that, uh, the government contributes another $100 uh, up to a maximum. So it, it is a, a really great opportunity to, to, to get some education savings money in those RESP accounts uh, for families who may not have very much uh, to start saving to begin with. So you need a few different basic elements to open an RESP or to be eligible for the Canada Learning Bond. And uh, a lot of these are ID requirements, so you need a social insurance number both for the child who will benefit from the RESP as well as for the person who is opening it, so the parent or the grandparent and, and so on. Um, and you also need an RESP provider that, that meets your needs. So this can be a financial institution or a, or, or a credit, like a bank or a credit union, for example. Um, and to get the Canada Learning Bond, there's a little bit more uh, there that you need to make sure you've got in order. So there is uh, proof of, of your income eligibility um, involved. And this is, this is also really different depending on how large or small your family is. Uh, that, could, that could change your eligibility. Um, you need to have been born after, uh, as of January 1st, 2004. So these are for more recent, uh, more recent uh, children. You need to be a resident of Canada, have a valid social insurance number, again, as well as a birth certificate, and you, you must have an RESP in your name. So these are the requirements involved for these, for these products, and you're going to hear from our panelists later why some of these can present some unique challenges uh, for different families. One of the challenges um, that you're going to hear as well um, has to do with uh, the fact that people who really could benefit the most from education savings are still often the, the least likely to, to actually take up an RESP or, or get the CLB. Uh, people uh, f uh, from families with lower incomes are, are still less likely to hold an RESP than those from wealthier homes. Um, and even amongst the Canada Learning Bond, even amongst families who are eligible for that, uh, only about a third have actually taken it. So, so there's still quite a lot of opportunity out there uh, for families who are eligible for, for these opportunities and, uh, and may just not simply be taking advantage of them for various reasons. We wanted to give a, a brief uh, shout out to our, our partners at SmartSaver uh, who are doing quite a lot of great work in this field. They uh, have a lot of materials to educate people about the CLB and about the RESP. Uh, and they have the Start My RESP application, which can help people connect with financial institutions to get a no fee RESP account. Um, so this is really an ideal connection point for low income families. And finally, one of the things that you're going to hear our panelists talk about today is that there are challenges uh, that, that, that are unique for, uh, for people in lower income groups uh, that have to do with the group RESP plans that are out there. Um, group RESP plans uh, are a different kind of uh, investment product uh, from uh, a mainstream uh, financial institution account. Um, and they're designed to pool your contributions with others, and they require a, a fairly regular commitment to making payments on a, on a fairly uh, specific schedule. And so there are benefits to these kinds of plans for uh, families from moderate to higher incomes if they're able to, to meet these requirements. Uh, but for families on low incomes, this can be quite challenging. So if, if you're on a limited income or if your income changes and you can't keep up with those contributions or if you need to change your contribution schedule, uh, that can result in very, very high fees or 
other kinds of challenges uh, to uh, when you miss those contributions. Um, or you may find yourself trying to reduce your spending in order to make those contributions rather than have the fees. Um, and so that's one of the things you're going to hear uh, in the background um, when our speakers are, are talking to you just now. Um, so that was a, a pretty quick synopsis of the ins and outs of, of RESPs and education savings in Canada. And we have quite a few resources there uh, in, our, in our resource notes at the end to link you to more. Uh, there's always so much more to be said and, and, and so much that we, we want to talk about. Folks, I'm just getting a note that we know we have a few audio challenges amongst some folks in our audience and we're, we're working on this uh, to try to get the quality. Uh, up. Hopefully, you'll you'll hear a much more smooth, a much more smooth sound from now on. So I'm going to turn uh, our attention over to our speakers. Um, we'd like to start with Allison from uh, Sault Saint Marie. Uh, sorry, from Credit Counseling Service of Sault Saint Marie and District. Um, uh, Credit Counseling Services Sault Ste. Marie and District is one of our partner agencies working in our Ontario Financial Empowerment Champions project. Uh, and this project uh, has several different financial empowerment program goals, uh, including helping a, a number of folks sign up for RESPs for the first time. So this is a significant portion of Allison's work, and she's here to tell us all about the work they do and the successes and challenges that they've had. So, um, Allison, I'm going to turn the microphone over to you. Thank you so much, Glenna. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. It's so great to be on this webinar and to talk to you all about the, some of the best practices that I've come up with in the past year and a half or so of working on this project. If we can go to the next slide. Okay, so I'll tell you a bit about my agency. We've been around for next year is our 50th year. Um, our agency has been doing this work um, in our in our community, uh, helping people with debt management plans, budget counseling, that sort of thing. Uh, we service everyone in our community, regardless of, of income or social status. Um, what um, what we're doing on this project is we're collaborating actually with the Sudbury Community Service Center um, to deliver the Financial Empowerment Champion project. Uh, it's, we're really proud of the work that we've been doing uh, in partnership together across a very large geographic distance and we're really, really happy to be doing this work. Um, so if we'll move along, there's a lot to share and not a lot of time. So, First of all, starting with uh, with RESPs, knowing that there is a lot of noise uh, for people. Um, first of all, you know, I think, you know, what is your pitch? Just going into that, like, um, so a joke that I make is that I never actually turn off talking about RESPs. Um, if I'm at a restaurant and I hear that my waiter has a child, I'll ask if they have, if their child has an RESP. That's how, that's, um, that's how serious I am about it. Um, but what, what it is, is a passion. You have to be passionate about RESPs because there is so much um, noise. There's a lot of, first of all, people don't know about it. You know, if you look at the stats, there are so many people that are, that are eligible and they don't even know the program exists for the Canada Learning Bond. There's confusion. What is the difference between an RESP and the Canada Learning Bond? There's that in itself. Um, and like Glenna touched on, you know, the outcomes that children have for, you know, with post education after high school is, is quite significant. Um, so if we're looking, especially at uh, low income population, who we really are targeting, you know, that's going to, you know, actually improve. They might even be first generation students. So there's not that, there's, they don't have that experience in their family of going to school. But, with the misconceptions about RESPs, it's really important to be able to speak clearly and effectively to, to convince people. That's really important, especially when we think of the, the challenges and barriers that uh, exist for people who are living on low incomes. Um, there's a lot going on. So we have to be very, very clear, um, you know, to, have them know why it's important for them to do it, how they can do it, where they can do it, and how you're going to be able to help them. 
and do that in a way that's exciting and despite our own personal challenges that we have as service providers to sign people up for RESPs. But, you know, the Canada Learning Bond, this program, if, you know, if somebody is based on the income, somebody could get up to $2,000 free money. That's just absolutely free to open, to, to go with it. And they don't know. Plus the, the matching programs, um, you know, it said that the RESP, you know, the Canada Learning Bond, if it were any other sort of financial product, it would probably be illegal because the, you know, the return on it is so great. Um, so, you know, we would face skepticism because of, because of that. Um, you know, people hear free money, they think it's got to be a scam. Um, in the landscape, there, there are a lot of, um, people are very uh, leery of RESPs. I come into this a lot um, because of specific group RESP plan providers. I have yet to meet a client who hasn't heard a story, had a family member, or maybe they're even, you know, signed up in a group plan themselves and, and know the, um, the challenges uh, faced by that. So, you know, when we're thinking about that, it's, you know, where are you, where are you meeting your people? How are you meeting your people? How are you communicating it? Um, and the easiest way um, that was explained to me by, um, you know, Amy in Winnipeg, uh, the RESP is the container for the Canada Learning Bond. The you know, the Canadian government can't just open up they just can't give the Canada Learning Bond to, to kids, no matter how much easier that would make life for us, it would be a nightmare on their end. And so we open up the container for the RESP, the government has the place to put it, and that's, that's really the clearest way to convey you know, what it is. But why? Why are they is important? We talk and we can talk about you know the stats that Smart SmartSaver has put together for us. There's so many materials. But you know, children who have an RESP are 33% more likely to go to school after high school. And that's you know all the better outcomes and everything else like that. So something that I want to put to, to everyone listening is to, you know to think about this. You know how are you making it easy and exciting? You know there's, you've got to find the way that spark to make going to the bank or getting the social insurance number or even as you know even as far back as you know getting the birth certificate because these are challenges that our clients are facing right and how are we going to make it easy and exciting for them especially depending on how much time do you have with the client for me i have a, I have a number of um, projects in my program so my resp appointments are actually closer to 30 minutes um, and you'll hear from Rossio that it's it's quite different um, with her program. But within that, how are you going to convey all that information, make it easy, and support them to get to the bank? So there is there is quite a lot, quite a lot going on. Um, if we can move on to the next slide. Okay. So things that things that I've learned uh, definitely. Um, you know, how are you organizing yourself? So what I've what I've done, and you can see there are, you can download these links. Um, I do have, you know, the way my tracking method. So I, I do use a case plan, a case, uh, case paper to collect people's uh, information that I need so that I can follow up for them with them. And also I um, have that amazing Excel spreadsheet that my executive director created for for me for to use in the project because uh, what are the challenges that we face you can have someone with you in the appointment and they're you know very happy and very excited about it but sometimes you know um, they need extra support to you know actually to get the social insurance number or they don't make it to the bank or you know our follow-up is important because something that happens is um at the bank may not actually be that familiar themselves with the registered education savings plan, you know, what's necessary for the Canada Learning Bond, that sort of thing. So follow-up with clients is is really very important. Um, aftercare um, means a lot to clients and it also ensures ensures that um, they're they're they've gone through with it. And if they if if they haven't done it, then that's the opportunity to find out what extra support do they need. 
uh, what can happen, are there other questions, are they not comfortable with something, you know, this is important to support them. Um, yeah, because, you know, definitely with that, when you're asking someone to go to the bank and asking them to do, you know, to set up the savings plan, which may actually be not in their comfort zone, not in their in their regular way of doing things, we have to be able to support them. And, and so they're trusting us. So when they go to the bank, if they, if they want to go by themselves, if they want to have support, um, they can feel comfortable doing that. Um, and maybe I don't sound very enthusiastic now, but definitely enthusiasm. I have found the more, the more excited I am with my clients, the more stoked I get. And, um, you know, I really do congratulate them on coming into the appointment and asking questions. I encourage them to ask, you know, ask as many questions as possible. Um, part of my pitch is, you know, building in, you know, potential answers that they may have, um, but it's really that enthusiasm. So they can feel really good and then that can carry them forward, you know, get get to the bank and, and do these things. Um, a really big part of my, you know, of my success that I've had, so, I, you know, I'll say like I've had in the, in the year and a half I've been working on this project, I've gotten about 88, 88 kids signed up for RESP, which I'm, I'm very proud of. Um, Sault Ste. Marie is a very small community. And, um, you know, with every child that we're getting the Canada Learning Bonds for, that that's one more kid that's going to have um, better opportunities for their education, feel like they have choices, and feel a better relationship with their school, school experience now. So speaking of the school experience, um, School boards are a definite, a definite partner uh, that we need to have. I, I've found that to be to be very great because that, you know, if we can get that buy-in from them, if um, you know, this opportunity to speak with schools, maybe opportunities to, you know, then have a sign-up event at a school. But I also use, you know, partnerships in the community. Um, and definitely knocking on the door anywhere there could be. You know, access to parents, access to children. I'm, you know, I'm building relationships with those organizations, so so I can tell their staff uh, about what my program is, educate them on the on the RASPs, and then be coming in, be able to go into their groups, so they know who I am, and they feel comfortable. They feel comfortable working with me, and they can then access the program themselves. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, so some of the successes that I've had, um, I'm really excited. Um, there's, you know, Crossford did a blog about it. I had an RESP sign up day in Garden River. So Garden River First Nation is uh, located east of Sault Ste. Marie. Um, I was able to hold a community sign up day, and I got over 20, I, about 25 children signed up in one day which is really amazing. And the way that happened was I first, you know, I first contacted um, the Learning Center on the First Nation and delivered a presentation to staff. And, you know, from my presentation, I had a couple, I actually had some staff members sign their children up for RISPs because of that. And then from there, we were able to have the discussion of me going, going in. So there is, there is a lot of partnership building, relationship building going on with that. But definitely if you have First Nations uh, in your area, build those relationships with them because yes, um, a lot of questions that I got was, well, we will be getting, you know, we'll be getting band funding for this. And I say, but the, you're gonna get $2,000 from the government. And this is money that yes, you'll have band funding, but you never know in any given year, how many, how many kids are, you know, com competing for that money? So you know, at least you're going to have that much, right? So the, you know, parents are really excited about that. Another RISP sign-up event that we are having is coming up at the end of the month. Uh, so we are able to access um, ESDC 
the ESDC mail out. Um, if anyone is at the ABLE conference in May, uh, we had ESDC speaking about it. So what they do is uh, they're making personalized letters for all the children in our you know, various postal codes in our community um, that tell them how much money they're eligible to receive for the Canada Learning Bond. We're going to have uh, representative from Service Canada there. We have um, a couple of our local banks. They will be there and what will happen is uh, people are getting the letter come, you know, come to come to the St. Mary Public Library, to stay with uh, this ID and sign up for an RESP because then you're eligible for this much of the Canada Learning Bond. It's really exciting. Um, over 6,000 letters are getting mailed out. So we'll see, you know, we'll see what our uptake on that will be. But regardless of how many people come out that day, that's, you know, a lot of people who are getting information about it. And I'm sure it's going to be feeding a lot of our RESP activity as we move on. Um, so different things that happen um, that have, you know, have shown success is like all, always, always, always building that trust with clients and, and being enthusiastic. Um, I, had, I had a client, I signed up um, her three children and she came back into the office for something and I, you know, I asked her if she signed up and she was so excited because she said, we have over $5,000 was it you know, because it, because it was quite a bit of money she had for her children and she said i never we never thought that we'd have any money safe for them to go to school we never ever thought this would be possible um you know based on their incomes based you know based on their their life struggle and they're they're so happy and that i hear that time and time and time again from clients never thought they'd be able to do this and this is something that they've You've been able to do and it's you can it's palpable how proud they are how excited they are uh, people off, i offer people to go to the bank and rossio will talk about this more but you know nobody's taken me up on that yet but it's always whatever if they know that you're willing to go that far to help them i find that in itself you know helps them to go um Glenna, how am i for time I'm not hearing anything. I think I'm not sure if, if that's time, but I'll you know I'll definitely if anybody has any questions afterwards, I'd be I'll be happy to answer them and I'll hand the microphone over to Rossio. Thank you. All right. Um, thank you, Allison, for. Um, for starting us off with this topic. Um, well, I am going to um, talk to you today about the RESP Education and Client um, Support Program at Family Services of Greater Vancouver. Um, can I have the next slide, please? Thank you, Rocio, uh, and thank you, Allison. Uh, as, it, as we can see, we're still troubleshooting our audio on this end, <laughs> and I appreciate everyone's patience and experience. But uh, again, I just want to thank Allison for her presentation and Rossio, we look forward to hearing you uh, over the next several minutes. So just to uh, take a few minutes to introduce um, Family Services of Greater Vancouver and the Financial Empowerment Program. Um, so uh, Family Services of Greater Vancouver is a charitable organization that has worked to inspire and support people to reach their full potential since um, 1928. So we've been around for about 90 years, providing um, counseling and family program, support programs. Um, and from this work um, at Family Services, um, it, it helped um, inform the need for financial literacy program. Um, there was a counselor who 15 years ago um, um, identified this as a big issue, that money and finances was a big stressor of many of the clients that Family Services was providing service to, and um, the program was born. Uh, and um, since that, we were providing um, group financial education, one-to-one -one mentoring for newcomers, um, and um, also working with Smart Saver at that point to spread the word about RESPs. 
And then in 2016-17, we joined the Prosper National FEC, and that's when we were able to expand our financial coaching services for clients, and also then um, provide more one-to-one -one support around our ESPs. Um, and for, um, well, myself, I, I do focus only on supporting clients to do the RESP work with them. So moving on, um, I wanted to quickly just go over how we support clients with the um, RESP. So um, they get to work with a, with a support worker that they trust. Um, we raise awareness of the Canada Education Savings Programs through workshops. Um, Clients uh, learn about RESPs and what affordable options um, there are for families. Uh, we teach them to use a Smart Saver link to access uh, zero fees and zero contribution accounts. Um, and we also, in our one-to-one -one support, we prepare the clients um, for their financial institution um, appointment. And then how we've been able to connect with clients and how we've been able to do this work. Um, so since uh, February 2017, um, we changed the way we um, were approaching uh, the work around RESPs. Um, and so since then, 2,953 individuals received RESP and education government incentive information, either through our money skills um, and RESP workshops, um, or our outreach efforts. And what that looked like uh, concretely is that we um, were able to um, do group education. So we did a, a numerous and several money skills. And we always took the time during those workshops to mention our ESP um, plans and the, and the Canada Learning Bond. Um, we also um, provide uh, information set two hour information sessions for groups um, on our ESPs. We also work in um, partnership with community members. Um, so we take a community development approach on this one and we partner with diverse community service providers. For example, we partner up with settlement organizations such as ISS of BC, um, PIRS, um, Success, Mosaic. Um, we have community partners um, like United Way who support us and provide um, platforms to spread the word. Um, we've also connected with family programs at neighborhood houses, rec centers, schools, and other nonprofits. Um, we've connected with the school districts at New, New Westminster, Vancouver, and Richmond. Um, we've also worked um, alongside with um, health organizations, so connecting to um, groups for mom, new mothers, uh, new parents. Um, we've also connected with caregiver organizations. So um, this could be an organization that supports grandparents taking care of grandchildren or foster parents. Um, and we've also been able to connect with um, language programs in BC that provide English as a second language to newcomers. Um, the outreach for um, uh, way we like the outreach we take the time to do some outreach and our strategy is to make sure that we're meeting clients face to face um, and this is really important because the more they get to know you and get familiar with you um, this is helping to build the rapport of a your program but also you as um, a support worker in, around our ESPs so um, part of the strategy includes um, information tables at food banks um, income assistance offices family drop-in programs, um, single parent support groups, um, community events for children or parents, um, and also um, going um, and doing presentations at parent, parent advisory committees. Um, we also um, were very fortunate to partner up with the, and the municipal incentives or initiatives. Um, I'm gonna... Um, so in New Westminster, they have um, a community poverty reduction in initiative. And from this initiative, they created a subcommittee. And um, the subcommittee was given the task to increase the uptake of RESP and the Canada Learning Bond in um, New Westminster. So we were invited um, to join the subcommittee alongside with um, SmartSaver 
uh, Dorlatun from um, uh, United Way of, of the Lower Mainland, Lisa Patterson from the BC Ministry of Children and Family, and um, Tristan Johnston from the City of New West. And together we um, um, collaborated and came up with a plan that would help increase the uptake in New Westminster. So some of the things that we, we did and tried, um, we did mail outs um, at different points of the year um, to the schools. So the school helped us, the school district helped us as well. They were part of the subcommittee. Um, we organized a group educations. We built partnerships with the uh, service providers that were in New West and um, focusing on them to uh, either uh, host a, a group education or connect us with clients. Um, we attended city events that were already organized in the, uh, in the city. Um, and we also took the time to train um, frontline workers in New West. And this is what um, moves me to my second point, is taking the time to train frontline workers. Um, taking the time to train frontline workers helps us spread the word, um, also give them information about the program and what the government is offering to parents. Um, it gives them a tool to also um, be able to support their clients who come to them with issues around RESPs. Um, and also they get to learn more about what um, Family Services is offering to clients um, about this particular um, work we do. So moving on to the next slide, um, just quickly going over the structure of my one-to-one -one appointments. Um, I take about an hour to two hours um, on the initial appointment. And this amount of time allows me to really, um, A, have a conversation with parents or caregivers um, and allowing them the space to raise questions, um, you know, answer any concerns, um, deal with any uh, issues that they have already with RESPs. Um, so giving them really the space to, to work out their doubts and concerns. And then we take the time to assess what's, what they have and what they're missing. Um, and this helps us inform what, what action plan they will, they will take later on at the end of the, the meeting. Um, if they're ready and they're, they're eager to sign up, we get them to sign up with Smart Saver right away in our first appointment. Um, and by the end of it, um, we have uh, an action plan that they've, they've chosen they could um, uh, follow through with. And um, usually it involves going for a bank appointment. And at this point, I, I do offer bank accompaniments if that helps them and encourages them to, to open in our ESP. Some clients at this point are really eager and they're willing to go the next day and they go on their own and everything is fine and they get signed up to RESPs. But some other clients um, aren't ready at that point and sometimes it could be because they're missing um, documents or there's other things in the way of just going straight to the bank. So at this point I will have to do a follow-up visit. Either it's a follow-up to accompany them to get um, SIN numbers or sit down and figure out where we can file taxes or the follow-up visit will be a bank accompaniment. And um, in all my bank accompaniments, the result has been 100% uptake of our ESPs. So that's what this, um, my one-to-one -one structure is like. Um, so um, I'm going to move on to challenges. So if you can tell by the slide, there's lots of challenges. Um, but I'm only going to speak to on three points that I found most um, that I think were the most challenging for me in the work I, uh, we did together with clients. So I'm gonna focus on um, my uh, challenges with uh, the inconsistent information that bank advisors give, provide families when they do end up going to the bank um, and also the group plans. So um, with bank advisors, I found that um, sometimes they didn't know about the government incentive programs or they were confused about it. Um, or sometimes they would just tell clients they weren't um, eligible for the Canada Learning Bond. Um, and this um, um, different diverse information that uh, the bankers ha uh, bank advisors have really um, led to confusion for clients, but also sometimes led to um, no uptake for clients who have visited a bank. Um, with 
uh, group plans, they have very complicated information that's going out to, uh, to parents. Um, it's hard to understand. Um, and they also um, have had bad experiences with representatives, like being called straight after giving birth with some with their kids or getting several calls to try to get them to sit down with them. Um, so the problem with, with the group plans has been the, their approach, but also the fact that um, the information is super complicated and sometimes not accurate. So that's been um, one of the big challenges. And um, a lot of my one-to-one um, -one appointments have been talking through that experience. Um, the other barrier that I think um, has really gotten in the way to very vulnerable clients has been the ID barrier. Um, right now in Vancouver, I am I'm relying on uh, nonprofit services that that provide this service for free for people on low income, and um, there's not very many. So the the nonprofits have limited uh, resources to be able to really um, um, do this, the ID, get ID quickly for clients. Um, it's usually run by volunteers, um, and that's great, but sometimes it, it, it's hard to access the services. Um, and, and in some, like, I don't know if um, you know, Vancouver is a, a city, but I'm also working with municipalities around Vancouver. And there's some municipalities that don't even have um, ID um, ser uh, services. I mean, nonprofit ID services. They have the the government services that provide um, the IDs, but sometimes it's the cost that really gets in the way for clients. Um, and then it, on my on my end, I don't have a fund that I can um, use to help them get um, a, a picture ID. And usually, picture ID requires a a primary. Um, um, primary ID, so a birth certificate, and sometimes in many cases, we don't even have that to start off with. Um, and um, the other thing I wanted to mention quickly is the, the information online. Um, that's um, There's lots of information online. If you Google RESP, the first thing that comes up are the group plans uh, and the bank um, information. Mm -hmm. And I don't find it particularly easy and simple to navigate. Um, it's very dense. Um, and this is also the same for the, um, can, uh, the government website. It's very dense, so it's hard to really uh, like get a sense quickly what RESPs are about and how the incentives work. Um, so this has probably discouraged many parents to go out on their own and, and do this, um, to, to do the RESP signups. And um, the other thing that I haven't found easy is the different, the very, the diverse level of financial literacy among clients. So I have like very high literacy clients to very, very low financial literacy clients. So those are some of the challenges that I had, I had faced in the last year and a half. So moving on to then the lessons and the positive things of doing this work is that for me, um, um, working um, from a client-centered approach has really been um, the most important um, lesson that I've learned from doing this work with clients. Um, I, I, I'm going to you know, give this advice, like if you do any one-to-one -one support, make sure it's client-centered, because then they get to make the decision when they do it, how they do it, and whether or not the plan is um, going to be a success. The other lesson that I learned was don't assume clients are ready. Um, some families need more time. And if I, and I have an example of this um, woman, a single mom with three kids. I met her at a time where she was in crisis, um, you know, she's, there was a lot of things going on in her life. Um, she's very positive. She said, thank you for the information, but right now, you know, I don't have the time to think about this, um, and, but thank you for the information. So I walked away thinking, oh man, I probably won't hear back from this, from this uh, young mother. Um, but after she had settled and, you know, gotten her house and, you know, had, was feeling more settled and the crisis was over, um, she called me up and said, uh, Rocio, I remember you giving me this this talk about RESPs. Can we meet? I'm ready to sign up. So, 
she had come to me and knocked on my door and said, let's go, I'm ready to go. So we went to the bank, we signed up her kids, and she was very happy that she was able to do that. And then I ran into her like three months later, um, and she's like, you know what, uh, I don't know if you remember being, but just so you know, I, I've managed to save about $3,000 now. So I'm so happy I took those steps to open an RESP. Um, the other a lesson that I have is simple message about RESP and education savings. So the three top messages that I want to make sure that clients walk away with is that they know that it's possible, that they have a choice and have control over the RESP accounts, uh, and also that um, taking this step will help reduce the student debt for their children in the future. So those are the three main messages that I make sure that parents walk away with. Um, the other lesson is working in partnership has really been helpful on, on how I approach the work. Without my partners, I don't think I'd be able to connect with as many people as I have. Example, like uh, working uh, with New, uh, the city of New West has proven to be really successful. We were able to increase the uptake. Um, and um, also, you know, having clients that um, host um, group workshops on a regular basis has proven to be very successful as well because their clients then are getting familiar and raising their awareness of where they can get non-biased information on RESPs. And then the other thing is um, meeting clients face-to-face. -face. Um, and I have a little story about this one um, because like I outlined in my outreach um, strategy, I was going everywhere, you know, food banks, programs. And what happened with that approach is that um, people who weren't ready were seeing me over and over again in different spaces. And because I was meeting them face to face, when they were ready, they came to me without me having to, you know, um, just, so it, it was funny how them seeing me in the community, it helped build the rapport and also the trust of clients that I am someone who they can count on to get the information that will um, be best for their family. So um, I have a, a great uh, little story about this is um, there's a grandmother who um, has under her care six grandchildren. Um, and she came to me as a, um, she was referred to me through um, um, Family Services of Greater Vancouver, um, I think Community Kitchens program. And uh, so we sat down and we made a plan and she was very confident and happy to go to the bank on her own. Um, but then, of course, um, the bank, for some reason, didn't do the right thing and told her she wasn't able to because she was the grandparent. She couldn't apply for the kind of learning bond. Um, so she was very upset and was very discouraged. So she didn't sign up at that time. A year later, so for a whole year, I kept seeing her at different spaces, you know, programs and agencies. And um, she kept saying, oh, I do have to do that. I know I'll do it. I was just very discouraged. Um, maybe I'll talk to you later. It took her a year to come back to me and she was ready to go. And this time we did it differently. You know, she took me up on the bank accompaniment to make sure that at the end of that meeting, she would have uh, an RESP. So um, that's the lessons I learned. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rocio. Um, that was that was just amazing. I, I love the the stories that you were telling there at the very end as well. Um, I, I hope everyone can hear me now. Can everyone hear me now? <laughs> uh, okay, great. Uh, we again apologize for the audio issues we were having <coughs> we were having there at the beginning of the presentation. Uh, as much as we practice these things in advance, there always seems to be uh, something that that throws a wrench in the in the in the spanner at the last minute. So. Um, uh, Rossio and Allison, this has been really great to hear from both of you. I really have enjoyed hearing the way you, you tailor your approaches to your to your clients and, and your communities. And, you know, hearing uh, Rossio, you could take an hour or two hours. Allison, you could take 30 minutes, um, but you're still doing a lot of the same a lot of the same kinds of things and you're really motivated to help your clients. And I think, Allison, you were joking that maybe you didn't sound very enthusiastic, but I actually think, I think both of you sound very enthusiastic about the work that, that you're doing. And I, I can 
I can believe uh, that that comes through in the way that you that you work with your clients. Um, so I want to. We have a couple of questions that have come in, and for anyone else, if you are listening in and thinking about more questions, please feel free to type in in the question box in your control panel. Um, I have a couple that I'm going to get started with that have already come through. Um, for either of you, either Allison or Rossio, um, are there specific criteria you use for when you're choosing banks uh, to assist clients to, to, go, to go and visit? How do you choose the bank that you go to with clients? Rossio, would you like to start? Yeah, um, that choice I leave it to the client. Um, okay. Yeah, so if they are happy with the client they're banking with um, and they have a good relationship with them, you know, that um, we go with the, the, the bank they already bank with. Um, okay. if, they're, if they're unsure, I encourage them to do their homework to see what other what banks are offering better RESPs. Okay, great. And Allison, how about you? It's, a, it's exactly the same for me. Like where, where they're already banking, where they feel comfortable, and like Rossio said, you know, it's, it's for them to do their research. Mm, great. Um, we have another question uh, about uh, teaching people at younger ages about RESPs. So uh, this person saying their participants come during the summer, often without parents, and this is when they have the largest impact on them. So do you have suggestions about how to successfully reach youth about RESPs and Canada Learning Bond when they're uh, age 13 to 18, roughly? Do either of you have experience with that? I've reached, I've, you know, I've reached out with them um, with, with younger people. Um, if they're, if they, you know, if they don't qualify for the Canada Learning Bond, you know, I, I try not to talk about it with them because it can be discouraging if they don't fit into that age range. Right. But definitely, you know, market marketing is filled with examples of how to advertise for kids to get that nag factor, right? So, mm. you know, that's that's something. Um, to, to work with kids is to get them excited about it so they can talk to their parents about it and they are ta you know talking about it this exciting thing that they heard about you know because that nag factor goes a long way I'm sure there's a lot of parents yeah. to call. <laughs> so if the kids are excited about it then they'll get their parents excited about it and then and that'll go forward yeah. exactly Rocio did you have experience in this area um yeah and it I try to reach out to youth. Um, I I don't focus on youth so much because um, um, I I was very focused on the parents. Right. Um, but but we were able to do a workshop with youth. Um, but it's it is harder for the older kids that are between the age of um, 15 and 18 because at that point there's not much option around the government incentives. Because okay. Once a child turns, um, I think you have to open an RESP before they turn 15, and then if they do it at that time, then they have to, um, the parents have to uh, contribute a minimum of 2,500 to be able to, mm. to get the grants. So, it, for me, this this group, its age group, has been quite challenging because I'm not sure how Got to. It. to to reach out to them about that. Haven't gotten that hook yet. <laughs> um, Allison, we have a question for you about uh, how you were so successful in reaching 88 people in the last year or more. Um, so you said you had uh, 25 people or so at your sign up event. Um, do you have any special sort of outreach success that's gotten you to the rest of that number uh, of getting to 88 people? Um. Well, definitely. Um, okay, so one of my activities is the income tax uh, preparation program. So if I'm preparing someone's taxes, I'm slipping in the RESP poster. I'm writing a note for the parents. You're eligible for this money. Please contact me. Um, trying to think what else. You know what? I, I harass my friend. I, <laughs> I, literally, I literally talk to anybody and everybody. Um, the credit counselors here at my agency are great. They talk about RASPs and their appointments and do give me a warm handshake for clients. I'm trying to think how else I've gone, I've gone, I've done booths at fairs. I'm, you know, I send out letters to, to the schools. Mm -hmm. 
presentations, presentations. It's, it's, it's I really, I literally don't shut up about it. Yeah. <laughs> so persistence is really <laughs> significant is what I'm yeah. hearing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, that's fantastic. I, uh, Rocio and Allison, we had a couple more questions come in um, that we're not going to have time to get to, but if you're, if you're open, I might send some of these to you offline and maybe we could have some answers uh, for folks uh, to send back uh, with the materials that, that we give everyone afterwards. Sure. Um, that would be great. Um, Allison and Rocio, thank you so much um, for giving all of your valuable time to us today and all of your preparation and and telling us just about the work that you do. Um, and to everyone listening, uh, thank you as well. We know you do really great, important work on the ground. We thank you so much for spending an hour with us today. Um, I want to give a shout out to our financial empowerment champions uh, in the projects that Allison and Rocio are both working with. Um, collectively, these partners have opened over 3,000 RESPs in the last few years, which is just an amazing number. So uh, we want to we want to really congratulate this work and, and hope that it continues even more successfully um, in the next couple of years as these projects uh, continue. Um, for everyone listening, uh, we want to remind you about the handouts that are in the GoToWebinar. We'll have these for you as well uh, when we collect all our materials later. Um, there's four handouts there and we want to collect some links for you to find out more information from SmartSaver, to find out more from Canada.ca. Um, and then if you're really interested in deep learning, we have a few research reports for you to dive into and hear all about what education and education savings can do, especially for, for those families who are, who are living with low incomes and may find it harder to save. Um, Thank you for joining us today. You're going to get the recording, you're going to get slides and everything that uh, we've looked at today uh, when we post on our hub. Uh, and we hope you'll join us next month because we have another webinar coming up all about saving on a low income. So today has been about education savings, but this will be more about saving generally for different kinds of goals. Uh, we'll have Dean from uh, Momentum in Calgary and we have John from uh, Credit Counseling Sudbury uh, in Ontario. So we hope you'll join us on December 6th. Uh, please look for our promotional information to sign up for that. Um, and you can find all that out if you subscribe to our newsletter uh, or visit us online. Um, Here's our contact information as well as Allison and Rossio's contact. Uh, they're happy to have you uh, be in touch if you'd like to connect with them and you know get more great uh, tips and, and uh, perhaps cross learning uh, from their work and your work. Uh, so we hope that you'll uh, think about what we've talked about today. We hope that you'll carry this forward as this is Financial Literacy Month and next week is Education Savings Week uh, in Canada. So thank you again for being with us today uh, and we hope you'll join us next time. Have a great one.